Optima Living operates high-quality seniors living communities across the lands now known as Alberta and British Columbia, traditional territories of diverse Indigenous peoples. We acknowledge that the lands where our communities stand and that our staff and residents call home are the traditional territories of many First Nations people, and we recognize their history. Uh, today we're going to be talking about fitness in later life, and today I have an amazing resident expert with us um, who has also brought me cookies. So I feel like I have to start with the cookies and we're going to come back to fitness. Okay, so Aaron, these are the Wild Rose cookie, and you got to tell me what's in them because obviously this is all about fitness in later life. So first of all, I should offer you one because there's two. Oh, sure. I'm, yes, I've had plenty today, thank I you. I may actually eat these on set, so I hope no one minds on that thing. But okay, tell me about these cookies. So because the, these are the Wild Rose cookies. We are known for them. They're made by our chef, Scott. Okay. Uh, we actually had a panel. We had taste tests, and these are the ones that won out by far. They have dark chocolate, white chocolate, pecans, and drizzled with caramel on top. So tell me what you think. Mm. Highly nutritious. Did people decide if they liked them to be chewy or hard? It was mixed. It was kind okay. of 50-50 on the chewy and hard. Sometimes he makes them chewy, sometimes it's a little harder. I guess it depends if I have dentures and all that might be a bit more difficult. Uh -huh. I could see that, okay, fine. <laughs> mm. a very good cookie. I think we should do a tour of like Optima sites and like the baking that they're doing. That would be actually really interesting. Okay, let's talk about fitness in later life, which I think is gonna be super important. So tell us about yourself. So from what I understand, um, you've taught yoga in five countries, but you said three that you lived in. So I guess five in that you were touring the others and you just happened to live in three of them. But tell me more about this. So yoga in five countries. Well, like I started at the very beginning, started in Canada and then I did my first training in Los Angeles. Shortly thereafter, I was asked to teach in Hong Kong. Uh, I had a friend who was brought over there to help open up a yoga studio. Okay. There was no yoga there when we got there. It blew up. <clears throat> so when I was working in Hong Kong, I kind of ran out of things to teach because I had one sort of small training under my belt. So I ended up going to India and I continued my studies there. And shortly thereafter, a couple of years, I was asked to be part of the faculty of a teacher training. So I can't say I've lived in India, but for the last 20 odd years, I would go there for two to three months a year. So I've spent a significant amount of time there. And then as part of that, does meditation fall in that category? Like are there, you've done these- 100%. These silence retreats, like tell me about this. These yeah. things are, are they are they actually part of all of this, or is that just a um... not 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 like a Buddhist vipassana, which is typically a ten day silent retreat. But uh, when I go visit the ashram, where was my yoga home? There, uh, it's a communal living environment. My teacher would usually prescribe me, you know, one to five days of silence, depending on kind of where I'm at. So the most I've done is a five day silent meditation. Interesting. And what is it like to live at an ashram? <clears throat> Not unlike living in a senior's home, actually. It's a communal environment. It's based on a holistic model. Uh, we have daily activities. You know, some, well, at the ashram, they're more required. Um, it's based around nutrition and uh, healthy eating, communications, dealing with people from different backgrounds, ge different geographical locations, uh, study, self-study, sacred study, karma, you know, selfless work. Well, that, that that is really interesting. And I like, I like the tie-in to kind of, in some ways it's like a senior's home because people sometimes think that a senior's home is a place where you go to like, I don't know, sit on a chair, vegetate, or end your life, and it's not at all. It's completely the opposite. And I think that's probably part of the conversation we should have today, which is around, um, yeah, the vibrance and the engagement and, and excitement that people can have in that environment. Um, and then, and how yoga plays into this. So. You're working right now at Wild Rose, which is one of our communities in Edmonton. Um, and what's your role there? I am the Lifestyle and Programs Manager okay. at Wild Rose. And then, so, in your role at Wild Rose, what would be your typical day like? Usually I get in and I set up the day. So I put on the board so everyone knows what's happening, catch the residents before they get down for breakfast so they know what to look forward to or what, to, what they're expecting. Monday to Friday I work and every day I teach yoga or a form of exercise. Most three out of the, f three out of the five I teach chair yoga. Um, at, right after yoga, 
I followed up with brain games or trivia or you know quizzes, things for memory recall, thinking when the, the blood is reached, the brain is highly oxygenated, it's kind of the best time. And I've also got a captured audience. Typically, a lot of seniors don't want to come for brain games because they're worried about where they're going to be. So I make it fun. A lot of, we do a lot of jokes and things. Okay, so tell me about this brain games thing. So um, one, how would you describe brain games? And two, is it really something people should be worried about? Or is it something that actually can the opposite. Yeah, brain games is really just kind of like a fun time to get together and question question residents. And there are, the topics are really varied from by subject. Some of them are, you know, working with science. Some of them are with sports and leisure and entertainment or you know literature. So depending on you know what your past or your passion is, people have different. You know, they will answer different questions. And it's probably just an opportunity to like learn things and see what people are really passionate about. Or Absolutely, yeah. it's just a get, great way to you know learn about learn about the residents and for the residents to learn about each other, to see maybe commonalities or... Sometimes um, I, as well as maybe people I know, somehow think like, okay, if, I, if I've been really active and engaged for most of my life, then when I hit like 65, I can just chill out and relax and not do anything because I've worked all my life to be, I've worked out all my life or been very active. Like, would you agree with that statement or would you think that actually people need to... I don't want to lead the question, but I, I, have a, I think I have a thought on this one. But I believe it's important to stay active. I mean, the level of activity is certainly going to change, but if you've done it your whole life, I find more people who have done it want to continue because they really recognize like the benefit is for their, you know, boosting their mood or their ability to perform certain duties or, you know, just to, you know, keep themselves healthy within all yeah. those systems. So what would you say are the ways that recreational activities and yoga, et cetera, can really help improve the overall mental and physical well-being of, of seniors? Engagement, social engagement, um, being connected, you know, drawing people out of their rooms and, you know, spending time with other residents, recognizing that they're not alone and that there is fun to be had and there's things to learn. I think that's one of the most surprising things for me is that, you know, the ability for anyone to learn something new, to feel motivated and inspired by other residents doing things that they've never done. And maybe also not feeling like not feeling awkward about it. Like yeah. just go try it and yeah. it's okay. It's, it's Absolutely. fun to try things. You know, the there's a philosophy that I've been trained in called the Eden philosophy. And Eden talks about the fact that people die not from sickness, but by loneliness, isolation, and boredom. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot about that, particularly with residents who who are living alone or be, or individuals who are living at home by themselves at home, don't have a lot of, you know, social interaction. Yeah, they may talk to someone on the phone once in a while, but that loneliness and isolation and even boredom are just I mean, they are killers, really, yeah. and, and it's something that we want to think about for sure. And, and what are some of the benefits of yoga? Are you, are you, do you feel like, does it help people with sleep? Does it help people with mobility? Maybe there's some obvious things. But... How much time do you have? <laughs> I, mean, I, could, I mean, it works on all the different, all the systems of the body. You know, it works on your physical level. I mean, I could talk about physical benefits, but there's emotional benefits, or spiritual benefits, I mean, social benefits. It's really endless. Can you tell us a story, then, about someone who's moved into the community or into a community working in who's struggling with their physical fitness or maybe struggling with something um, and how your engagement with them helped? Sure, we've got several, but um, one I can think of a lady who was there when I first started working and she was struggling with uh, COPD. So she's on a lot of inhalers, she sees her doctors often. Um, and. For her, that was a perceived limitation that, that she wasn't going to be able to come and do yoga because all the breathing involved. So I encourage her to come, and it typically means me knocking on her door still years after me starting there, like, it's time. Oh, oh, okay, I'll come. She won't come unless I knock. So she knock, bring her down. And uh, it was actually really nice about six months ago, she came back from her doctor's and she's lowered her amount of inhaler she takes per day, and her doctor says that she has done a great improvement. And he was wondering what what was different, and she's like, "I'm doing yoga every day." I'm also often curious how people celebrate things, and I wonder if, you know, did she celebrate that moment, or do we help them? I, 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 I certainly recognize that moment, I acknowledge yeah. that moment, and I do talk about it in class in front of the other uh, st students or residents yeah, that yeah, come yeah. in to say, you know, yeah. this you, there's always growth possible, whether it's reclaiming something you once had or maintaining something you've got today, it's worth coming. And that's the yeah, only way it. you're going to do it. It's just regular practice. So what are some of the top kind of yoga poses that are most beneficial to seniors? I mean, obviously, I guess chair pose is not really relevant anymore, but <laughs> what would be other Chair poses? pose is really good. You're yeah. both certainly building your leg strength. But if you're in, like, chair yoga, then you're not going to do chair pose, so I guess Oh, that... you do chair pose in chair oh. yoga. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll teach it to you later. Right. Maybe. <laughs> Get up on that. Yeah. Um, for seniors, I mean, 
all the postures have benefits, but I think for seniors, and especially, we'll start off with women, senior women, um, I always make sure that they bring their arms over their head, having shoulder flexibility. Um, it's really good for the blood circulation, helping with the lymph drainage. Uh, you know, Sometimes I can really like lift my arm over my head, so yeah. like, oh, you don't mean like that, then you mean like Any kind of arms over the head. Just bring your hands up over your head. Shoulder right. flexibility. <laughs> you know, anyone as they age and have more of a sedentary life, typically is to round forward and sort of the spine yeah. collapses and you don't use your arms as much. You're not active in your knife. You're not picking up after your kids, your husband. You're not working in the garden as much as you did. Yeah. So it's just a reminder to you know, keep that area flexible as well as um, keeping the, you know, the strength of the, of the shoulder joint. So can we go try this? Like, can we actually go and try <laughs> out these moves and see like what it's like? That's the only way you're gonna learn. Yeah, for sure, let's okay, go. Okay, let's do it. Thanks. No, no thanks, that didn't work. Dee, 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 dee. Taking my cookie. All right, I'm gonna get my Apple Watch ready. <laughs> yoga setting. I got my yoga stuff. Okay. okay, I'm ready to go. Okay. No? Wow. No, I don't think you're gonna need all those props. But the chair is the only thing you're gonna need, and you probably won't my be breaking a sweat. Kids too. said that I needed all the stuff well, for yoga. Chair yoga. Fine. 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 All right. And you may or may not need the headband, but you know if it makes you feel more comfortable. It's keep like it my on. Optima Living colors it matches with my socks. Okay. No. No. no? Perfect. Okay, let's rock. All right. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. In your chair, you want to make sure you're sitting forward, right on that firm front piece. And I'm sitting forward. Yeah, because you want to use your muscles of your spine to keep yourself upright. All right. Hands on your knees. Can I breathe now? You gotta breathe. Okay. Gotta relax right. your stomach when you're breathing, right? Because you want to draw the breath down into the lower part okay. of the lungs. There's no six pack working in six pack. Okay. okay. Yoga is about self-observation, so you want to just respect your limits, see what feels natural. There's no pushing. You're not forcing into anything. It should feel very natural. Okay, I'm so sitting on a chair. Yes, relax your stomach. This doesn't feel natural, but okay, fine. All right. <laughs> All right, you okay. ready? Yeah. First thing I want you to do is bring your arms out beside you. I want you to bring your hands far enough back that you can't see your fingers. Relax your shoulders, and you're still breathing, right? Yes. Straight elbows. Okay. Now point your fingers up towards the ceiling. Now, without looking at your hands, just bring the pinky fingers down. Just a pinky finger. Oh, pinky fingers. Yeah, okay. the other one's up. Yeah. Flex, flex at the wrist. Next one comes ring finger. So now we've got middle finger, index, and thumb. Spread them wide apart. Okay. Are you breathing still? Yes, barely, Okay, barely. middle finger down. So now index and thumb are open. Spread them wide apart. Okay. Yeah, now we've got index fingers coming down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, curl your thumb around. The fingers are going to roll the wrists. Bring them back so you can see them. Bring them right in front. And we give your hands a little shake, 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 shake. Okay. Hands on your knees. We're going to move with the breath. This is okay. called cat cow in English. We're going to do a big arm circle. So What's it called in other languages? In Sanskrit, it's called Marjriyasana. Right. So you're going to take your hands as you inhale. So everything we do in yoga is coordinated with the breath. Okay. So naturally, when you inhale, it's, when a, a, it's an uplifting. <laughs> and when you exhale, it's coming down and using gravity, right? Okay. So the inhale, we're going to reach the arms up. Circle your hands to your knees. And then we're going to cave the spine in and look down at the ground. Now inhale, lift your chest through the arms, raise the arms over the head. Exhale, hands to the knees, round the spine. Pull the navel back in. Good. Inhale, let's do a few more of these. And exhale, round the spine, draw the navel in. Let's do one more. Inhale. Oh. Uh, yep, forward. And then exhale, around and down. Empty out all the breath. Good. Come back into a nice tall spine. All right, so just give your legs a little kick. All right, we're gonna do finish up with one thing: forward bend. Okay. You're okay. Scoot, scoot a little forward, and have your feet apart. Sit up tall, so your chest lifts, and then you're gonna fold forward into the creases of your hips. Maybe your elbows here. You seem kind of flexible, gent. Maybe your hands can come down. All right. It seems like your 94 year olds maybe more flexible than I am, but that's okay. Some are more flexible than me. And let's let your head relax. Really important part, say at the end of an exercise or yoga, is you come into a forward bend. It helps to relax your nervous system. Can I fall asleep here? You could. Okay. Some people have. Sweet. <laughs> and you get that oxygenated blood flow to the brain. It slows your heart down naturally as the blood just flows with the force of gravity without using the heart muscle, so it allows it to relax. Just take a few deep breaths. You might feel a stretching in your back. Good. Take your hands to your knees. 
you're going to come up very, very slowly because of said blood circulation is now in the head. It will take a moment or two for it to flood back down to the heart. You might feel a little lightheaded, Ooh, a little woozy. Yeah. We're going to sit oh, back yeah. in our chairs a little bit and you relax. Awesome. How do you feel? Great. Good. After, so you do this how many times a week? I, five days a week. Oh, at, the, at the home, I teach it five days a week. Yeah, maybe we'll have to come check it out one day, see if these, give these seniors a run for their money. I don't <laughs> think I'll get a run for my own money. Jeez. But that was great. No, that was awesome. Feels great. Well, thanks for joining me in yoga. Well, thanks for... You're well done. Thanks for letting me know I didn't need any of my props, but it's great. I'll keep them for next time. Yeah, but it's also cool because you could do that just sitting in your own office chair or... Anywhere. Wherever you don't need to have, room, living room, you don't yeah. need to be like kitted out or no, not. As long as you're wearing something comfortable that you can move in, something, yeah. Be able to move yeah, in. that's great. That's awesome. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. There is uh, undoubtedly lots and lots of evidence that keeping mobile is really important for health and well being in later life. Uh, not only the, uh, the, the research evidence about the benefits of exercise, but also uh, the maintenance of mobility. And undoubtedly, as one gets older, loss of mobility has huge consequences, both for quality of life, well-being, and for the amount of help that people need. The exercise you need to do depends on what you want to achieve and at its core the, probably the, one of the most important things for people who are less mobile is balance and stability. Uh, falls are very common in later life. Uh, if you've fallen once you're much more likely to fall again. So apart from those weather-wise things over in Alberta with uh, um, micro spikes and the little uh, spiky things on, on canes, then exercises specific for balance and stability are important. Now, there's one really good program which has got lots of evidence behind it that you can search out on the internet called the Otago Program. And that's a series of, I think, 12 exercises that need to be done regularly and have a marked improvement on balance and stability. If you're more uh, interested in maintaining muscle strength and health, then resistance exercises are important. Even if that's a couple of kilograms, repetitive exercises for arm and leg movements are, are really important. And that combined with a healthy diet, which undoubtedly we'll talk about in another episode, uh, uh, give you great gains. So we've got exercise for stability and balance, exercise for muscle strength, and then of course we think, think about exercise for heart health. Exercise for heart health is usually a little bit more moderate, things that make you a little short of breath whilst you're exercising. Uh, and again, there are really good programs and community organisations around that you can get information on, and often people will run exercise classes. We talked a bit, a bit about health benefits, apart from mobility. Well, you can stave off heart disease, brain disease, increase muscle strength, bone health, uh, mood and mental health and well-being and things like incontinence uh, with regular adherence to exercise. There's also some evidence that regular exercises have better brain and cognitive function than those people who don't exercise. We know that physical activity is important and we also know that sedentary activity like doing nothing is, is not good for health. So you might ask about levels of physical activity, and clearly you shouldn't ignore the things that you do every day. Your household tasks, walking around, are all parts of that, uh, and do count for overall physical activity. If you're interested in balance and stability, then there's a simple test you can do. Can you stand unaided on one leg? If you can't manage 10 seconds in a, and you are over 65, then that indicates falls risk. Likewise, if you can't get up from a chair, walk uh, three to four meters and back again in fewer than 20 seconds, then that also indicates fall, falls risk. You've, you've identified yourself as someone who might benefit from paying attention to physical mobility and balance and stability exercises. Um, working on your physical fitness doesn't mean you have to join a gym or buy leotards or, or runners. You can do simple things at home. Uh, as we mentioned for the Otago program about balance and stability for fall prevention, there are lots of uh, easy workouts and easy exercise programs that you can find on the internet. You don't need to buy weights, you can use things like bean cans or, or, or vegetable cans, which give you simple resistance for exercises at home. 
When you start exercising, you're probably going to need some additional support. So use the kitchen counter or the kitchen island or whatever you have handy to give you that extra support and balance. You find that as you progress, you will not need that balance and you can support yourself. Of course, if you're walking outside, you need to make sure that it's safe, that you're not near traffic and that there's relatively good light. Uh, older people need more light and more contrast for good vision. You also need to make sure that your vision's corrected, particularly in busy environments and where there are many distractions. Thank you so much for watching this episode of OLTV. If you liked what you saw and you want to watch more, like this video and subscribe to the Optima Living channel right here on YouTube.